Yeah. Uh. Um, welcome to the I Be Ballin' Basketball Show with your girl Ashley I Be Ballin'. Yeah, we're gonna talk about NBA awards predictions. The MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, Coach of the Year, GM of the Year, Most Improved, Rookie of the Year. We're talking about everything, even, you know, West and East MVPs, you know, NBA Cup MVP. We talking about it all, yo. And I got a great guest. He's a great friend of mine and a great baller and a great, you know, basketball IQ. He loves basketball, loves the NBA. Give it up for Kyle. Oh, What's up? Hey, Ashley. Thanks for having me on the show, as always. You uh, representing the Packers, Green Bay. Give it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, usually, usually I am in a Bucks shirt. So uh, today was Sunday and the Packers were playing. And I played some basketball earlier today. So this was like just kind of my hooping shirt. So I'm Packers today. All right, all right, balling, balling, and we're. I, I do love the Bucks, though, number one. So I was Bucks, just about to say that. The Bucks and the NBA and basketball are my are my go to, my main my main loves. But I do like other sports still. Yeah, we love the Bucks. Check out the background. Check out the hat, freak. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love the background and all the pictures too. Yeah, I got pictures everywhere in my room. Go check out my Bucks memorabilia video. <laughs> it's like a, um, oh, what's the word? Like a um, collage or it's like a Bucks collage kind of. Yeah, you know, NBA. I got a little bit of WNBA, you know, pictures, you know. So I have all my Bucks pictures on Facebook. <laughs> Oh, yeah. You have a lot I, of those on Facebook. I, I, be I have a lot them. of them. Yeah, I'll be looking at them. Woo, woo. <laughs> Let's get it started with MVP. You know, MVP, it's a huge, big award. Usually it goes to, like, someone, you know, your team is winning, but you also put up big numbers. You know, I got, look, I think the three that I pick is Joel Embiid, right? I can see him repeating, you know, because the 76ers are playing well. They got rid of James Harden, and he's just been balling. He's a big MVP, and he does it on both ends. I don't see Jokic winning again. I just, mm. you know, people made such a ruckus with the back-to-backs. I don't see him winning this year. Even though he's going to be really, really good, this Nugget's going to be really, really good. I love Giannis. I want Giannis to win MVP every year, but I'm not going to. He's in my top three, but I'm not going to pick him. I'm picking Luka. Everyone is like, Luka, 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 and his team wasn't doing good. This year, his team's doing well. And he's balling. You got Kyrie Irving for a full season. You got Grant Williams. Luca is just Luca magic. You know, <laughs> the clutch shots. You know, he goes at his own pace. You know, you think you're there, but he just shoots over you. And he's a great passer, good rebounder. Who are your, you know, MVP candidates, who do you predict to be, you know, the finalists and who's the winner? Um, no, wherever that I go, yeah, I'm thinking of you. Say, so wherever that I go, yeah, I'm thinking of you. Off the dome, yeah, I rap just for you, just for my boo. Yep, Luca. Um, okay. my top three is Joel Embiid and Giannis. I'm not going to pick on. Jokic because a lot of people are like, Voter fatigue. He already got two. I'm picking Giannis because I'm a Bucks fan, but also I feel like he's won two MVPs. But I feel like it was so long ago. I feel like uh, people might forget. But Jokic hey, is is very recent. Old, <laughs> don't make me feel old, now, Ashley. That wasn't uh, that long. It was okay. It wasn't that long, no. <laughs> I I know what you mean, though. 
Yeah. Um, uh, so, so you think the three finalists will be uh, Jokic, Embiid, and Luca? But Luca and will win. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, of course I don't. I mean, I I'm right there with you. I I wish Giannis could win every single year, but I don't know. The league you always like anoints like a they fall in love with a new toy, as I like to call it. <laughs> the guys yeah, who have, the guys who have won their MVPs, they become like like a dusty old toy that sits up on like a shelf, and then like they don't like care about it anymore. Because there's that's a there's a new true. toy to play with. That's true. And it's like, and I always look at it as like, what's wrong with the old toy? Like classic toys never go out of style, in my opinion. But that's why, yeah. So I'll probably um, pick the honest, yeah. So that's the old toy. So I know you said, hmm, I'm I'm thinking about what you said and. I know you said you don't see any way that Jokic would win it again. I don't know if I agree with that. I might. No, not ever again. Just not this year. Oh well, even for this year, I think I would. I think I would disagree with that. Still, I think he is just putting up such silly, absurd numbers, and like the Nuggets are eight and one, I believe, currently, and okay. Jamal okay. Murray has, Jamal Murray is now hurt and missing time, so, like, Ooh, Jokic, yeah. Jokic also has that narrative kind of working in his favor, like, if he continues to win with that, with Murray hurt, um, I don't know, I just see him as, and I also kind of look at it as last year, when Embiid won MVP, mm-hmm. everybody was kind of up in arms about like the optics of it, like following the playoffs, because then Jokic went on to win his championship and his finals MVP and Embiid was a second round exit. So I think the league would actually look at it as a way of kind of like doing right by Jokic for not naming him MVP last year. They may decide to name him MVP this year as a way to kind of make up for that. And there was also, like, this thing kind of around him about, like, oh, like, he can't win another MVP until he wins a championship, similar to how they kind of, the media talked about Giannis also. Well, now he's and done then, it. And then he went out and won one. So, like, I kind of look at it as that, too. Like, well, he, like, you can no longer say that. Like, oh, like, he has to win a championship or, oh, he has to get it done in the playoffs. Well, he did <laughs> and he won last year so that so that like that 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 agenda or that like that viewer that narrative like is not true anymore so to me that would make him further back in the running for mvp um i do i do see what you're saying with luca and i do agree that the league would like a new MVP in some ways, like what I was talking about with the, the new toys. Yeah. (laughs) Sort of deal. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I would say early on, um, there's also, well, I'll, I'll hold off on that 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 point. Um, I'll say I'll say I think it'll come down to Embiid, Jokic, or Luca. Also, um, uh, I'm gonna go with Jokic winning MVP again, and then it's like okay. a it's it's sort of like a safe call. It's all good. It's all but good. That's where I'll go. I'll go with. I'll go with Jokic being MVP. The other point I was going to make is I'm <laughs> I could see the league trying to make this push for like Jason Tatum to win MVP too cuz it oh, kind of yeah. It kind of seems like they want they want that also and like I don't know. I don't quite agree with that. Like Jason Tatum's a great player but like I don't know. I don't I don't totally see MVP with him. It's just something I don't really see but other people have a different view and that's fine i guess like we all view it differently um i feel like the nba they always want to make stars out of somebody on the team 
on the on Celtics. The team. Yeah. Specifically. Um, well, the NBA I, is like the Celtics. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> I think eventually Jason Tatum will win an MVP. I'm just not sure when it will be. He's definitely going to be a candidate as long as the Celtics win. But I don't know. Um, I just think Luka and Jokic, they're having um, bigger years. Um, I think they have more responsibility for their teams. Um, the league just loves the Celtics. I swear, like, if a Celtics player blows their nose, it's like the top story. It's like a top oh. story having. Top story, like, really? <laughs> like Jalen, Jalen Brown like blows nose today, or like Jason Tatum like uses the bathroom. Like coming up next on Sports Center, like the big story. It's like okay, oh, give man. me a break. <laughs> give me a break with the Celtics stuff. And Doris Burke is like the worst about like the Celtics stuff. I don't know if you like whenever she covers the Celtic games, she's just like she's hard to listen to. Like oh. <laughs> she's just so for the Celtics and she is like so obvious, obviously like rooting for them during the game. And it's like, you're not supposed to be biased. You're supposed to be a neutral party for ESPN. And I just, I, it annoys me, but that's another, that's another rant for another day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so for MVP, I got Luca right now. He's averaging 32, eight and eight. You got Jokic. He's averaging 29, 12 and eight. Um, and Bede's one of ours, 31, 11, and 5. Jason Tatum, 27 and 8. That, I don't know if that's MVP level. Giannis only is 28, 9. But maybe Tatum and Giannis, um, maybe their, you know, points will go up. Who knows? It's the early season. Let's go on to the defensive player of the year. Now, I think the league should have gave it to Brooke Lopez last year. He was old. He was blocking shots left and right. I feel like the refs don't like Brooke. Let me get a rant out because sometimes Brooke blocks a shot, but then they call it a foul. So now it's a block taken away. And I just hate it. He could have had 10 blocks last year, but they kept calling fouls. It's ridiculous. Um no. But you and he know, goes he goes straight up like the principle of verticality. Marcus Johnson always like talks about it on the Bucks broadcast. He's like his arms are straight up like this. Like there are yeah. certain plays where he doesn't even leave the ground, and like a defender just throws their body into him, and it's like oh, automatic foul on Brook Lopez. It's like what? Like it really is ridiculous. Yeah. Like so, and I I agree. I think Brook Lopez should have won defensive player of the year last year over Jaron Jackson Jr. And one of the biggest reasons is because there was a big difference in games played. Brooke, I believe, played in 78 total games and Jaron Jackson played in 63. So there was a difference of 15 oh, wow. like, games played. And I'm like, and yes, like it's true that Jaron Jackson averaged more like blocks per game, but he played in less games. So that means that Brooke, Brooke had more total blocks because he played in more games. So his impact and his value was greater, in my opinion, just from playing in more games and having a higher block total. So yeah, the league, the league, the league ripped off the Bucks last year and Question. specifically Brooke. Question. Didn't they make a new rule saying you had to play a certain amount of games to win awards yes. this year? Yes. What was the um, number? 70 something no it's it's 65 games is the rule oh okay okay okay, okay. <laughs> so to be eligible for the awards you have to appear and play in 65 games <laughs> okay i thought it would be higher okay okay so no, era of load management <laughs> yeah load management there's another there's another rant <laughs> <laughs> Lots of um, NBA rants. Yeah. We should just make a separate video of our rants. <laughs> we could. It would last for hours. Oh, yeah. So, Jaron Jackson Jr., he's definitely um a great shot blocker. He covers so much ground, so much length. He's definitely in my top three of, you know, he has a great chance of repeating I look at, like, all of, like, 
my predictions for um defensive player of the year and like it's all like two it's like one block for each player or like one steal for each player but um I'm going to throw something at you a bold one so Jerry okay. Jackson Jr is in my top 3 but however like you could say bam I feel like bam is underrated he doesn't get his just due but someone I think that doesn't get their just due, Herb Jones from the Pelicans. Mm. I feel like he's not going to win, but I'm just going to put him in my top three to give him some love because, okay. man, mm. I just feel like everyone is like Victor Webiana blocking shots left and right, but I feel like Herb Jones, he'd be blocking shots from the three-point line, too. So, he's in my top uh, three. So, the winner that I'm going to pick, I know people are going to say, you're biased, you're biased, because there's a lot of hype around it. But I'm going to pick Webby. I'm picking Webby. I think, I don't know if there's ever been a rookie to win Defensive Player of the Year. Um... But if there wasn't, I think Webby has a great chance because I feel like at the end of the year, he's going to be up to three blocks. Right now, he's averaging, let me see, he's averaging 2.6 blocks, one still. But I think by the end of the year, once he really gets acclimated, he's going to be up to three. I thought he was going to be top five in blocks before the year. But looks like he's a uh, first, I think, or at least top three. So it's he's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. Another crazy. another guy I would mention would be Chet Holmgren. Actually, oh, yeah. he, he's averaging a lot of steals and blocks early on, yeah. also. So he's been really impressive. Yeah, two point three blocks, one steal. That's amazing for rookies. It is. It's really special. So, um, so who do you have winning? I have Victor Webiana. You oh, know. oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, that's right, you said that. It's a bold pick. I don't think he's going to win hmm. because he's a rookie. And people are going to be like, there's a lot of other great shot blockers that haven't won, like Bam. I think another one is Evan Mobley. He's a great shot blocker. That's another good one. Drew Holiday, he's never won it. And I feel like now that he's with the Celtics, he has a great oh, chance. <laughs> he has a great chance. Of Excuse winning. me while I grab my barf bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. I like Drew. I still like yeah. Drew. I just, yeah. I just, the Celtics stuff just irritates me. He could have been with any team. But Bucks fans? Celtics, man. Bucks fans don't. Like the Celtics fans, there's just like Bucks. Celtics don't like us, and we don't like them. That's just kind of what it is. We've had a lot of playoff history with them. Even we do. It was like contenders. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The classic 2018 Eric Bledsoe versus Terry Rozier. And oh, Pistons. do not bring that hey. up. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I probably just made some Celtics fan happy somewhere by. By making them remember that. Terry, Terry, don't remind me. Who, who's uh, your, you know, winner of DPOY? You know, who's mm -hmm. your candidates? Originally, I did another uh, NBA predictions, actually informally with another friend of mine before the season started. And I oh. chose Jaron Jackson Jr. to repeat again just because I thought, like, oh, like, the NBA is always impressed with his raw numbers um with right. blocks and everything um but at the time of this um recording that we're doing the grizzlies have gotten off to a one and eight start and it's been really bad so now i'm kind of wondering like if they don't turn their season around or if they don't start playing better can he win defensive player of the year on like a last place or like a bad team like yeah so I'm going to go away from that pick now for the sake of this, uh, this show. Um, 
Oh man, you took my Wembenyama thunder there. Um, <laughs> hey, probably, you can do probably it too. Where I was, probably where I was gonna go. Um, I think he's gonna win, but that's my pick. Um, um exactly. oh, Rudy Gobert, he's another one. Um, his uh, red. As you know, his defensive rep I'm, has went down, but he's still like. He's I'm gonna need to find great. that barf bag again. <laughs> no, he's still good with rim protection, even uh, though he gets. He, he I don't gets like him. Some, he gets a lot of you know bad rap because he gets dunked on a lot, and when he goes to the perimeter, he just be running in circles. It's like any. Guard can like score over him. If you put him in the pick and roll, you can you can go at him pretty strongly. Every time Giannis plays him, he just like loves to attack Gobert. Like it's it's really interesting to me. I Giannis, don't know if you've noticed that, but Giannis is another you know defensive um, player candidate. You know, I just yeah. don't want my Bucks biasy to you know he get is. it. Away. He is. The one thing I'd like be concerned about him is like our defense as a team has been bad currently, That's like true. real bad. So even if he himself is playing great individually defensively, can he win it if the Bucks yeah. as a team good defensively? Um, I'm going to go with a guy you mentioned who has kind of been getting some um, – well, he does get underrated in a sense, but like there's been a little bit of a push for him in recent years to win one. And I'll go with Bam. Bam Bam. Bam. Ad now let me say this right. Ad add a bio. Out of bio. Out of bio. Out of bio. Yep. Bam out of bio. Miami Heat defensive player of the year. That's where I'll go. Remember, he got that block saving game against Tatum. Tatum thought oh, he yeah. had it. it oh, that was that in the was that in the bubble? I, I think that think was the so. bubble. Oh, really? really? I thought it was the bubble because the Heat played the Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. I think in the bubble. Oh, okay. They played After them they so much; it's hard to remember. Yeah. <laughs> The Heat and the Celtics and the Bucks and Celtics, those teams are like always playing each other, it seems. Yeah. Or the Bucks and Heat. It's <laughs> like Bucks and Heat and Bucks Celtics. That's like what it always is. I know. It's never Bucks, it's never Bucks Sixers. Like Yeah, that's what a lot of people want, you know. It's weird. It never that never happens. From the twenty um two thousand and one. Yeah. People in a rematch. We need we need uh Redemption for that. Yeah. Of course, the league might just screw us again like they did in 2001. They'll just do it over again. Nah, nah, nah. Just just think positive. But <laughs> at the same All time, right. the league doesn't like us for some reason. No, they don't. It's, it's They're not even hiding it well. Like, you can obviously see it, but... Like the bogus so, ejection of, of, of Giannis the other day for... You know, yeah. Ashley... You know, it comes to my mind that I've I've been staring at you for, you know, the past, whatever, 15 minutes. I should have been ejected a long time ago. I've been staring at you a long time. <laughs> ah, nice so, joke. Nice one. If, if, nice. if somebody can get ejected for staring at somebody for half a second or, like, one second at most, then, man, like, I should be ejected every day of my life. It wasn't even the stare. I think it, Giannis got on some ref's nerve. For the first technical, and I think the ref planned it all along. He probably said, "I'm yeah. gonna get him out. Just watch. I'm yeah. gonna get him out." I think out. they were just Something. they were just looking for any like little excuse to like get him yeah, out. They're, they're yeah. very petty. Um, yeah. They were so, in the fence, you know. Yep. So I got Bam winning Defensive Player of the Year, and uh, you have one Wem Yeah, I don't think they're gonna give it to a rookie because, like you said. Bam, for many years, you know, a lot of people are like, Bam should win, Bam should win. He should get more credit. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't think he does. That's Evan why I went to him. a good action, so yeah. I feel but, like Bam is like kind of like 
he's waited his time sort of for that award, so it kind of makes right, sense. Right, right. He's going to work it many, many years. Well, all right, what's our next award prediction? So our next award, this award is very, very tricky. MIP, most improved. They gave it to John Morant last year. I don't think they should have did it because it's like, when you are already meant to be a star, should you really get it? Shouldn't it go to, like, people, like, who aren't, you know, very popular? And you don't really yeah, see it. Morant, like, what you're saying is, like, Morant was, like, the number two pick in the draft. So, I mean, everybody knew he was going to be good. So, right. right. Doesn't really make sense. Jordan should have got it. All right. Uh, I don't quite know about no. that one, but yeah, I don't know who I would have went with last year, but I have a, a clear person in mind for this year that I'm going to choose. Do you want to go first and do it? Uh, you can go first. Well, I have a couple of options. Uh, the season is like nine or ten games in, so you kind of see what Cam Thomas is doing. But I didn't know if he was going to be a starter or not. But he's obviously, it's like he went from like maybe 10 points to 26 points. Um, You have Jalen Johnson with the Hawks. You know, he's doing big. Um, So there's a lot of options. Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes is very big. I think Scotty Barnes is in my top, top three because... He actually has the reins. It's no longer Siakam's team. You know, it's Katie Barnes. You know. Um, I'll I'll confess, he was the guy I was thinking of. He's my choice. I'll just say it there. He's your choice? Yeah. Let me see what he's averaging. He's averaging so far. Let me see. He's my most improved choice. Or my most improved... Winner. Went from 15 to 21 points, and now it's 10 rebounds, it six assists, one block. Oh, yeah. two, no, two blocks, one steal. So that's a yeah, great it pick. Is, it, is, it is still early, but it definitely looks like he's taken a big step. He kind of looks like Giannis when he won the most improved in 2016. Yeah. Um, He gets compared to Giannis, you know, because he doesn't really have that jumper yet, but he can do so many things to help your team. That wasn't my pick, though. He's in my top three. (laughs) He's my my pick, though, so that's what I'll say. Yeah. So I have, like, a tie. Um, They're not really popular. No, I have a winner, but I have a tie for number two. So, like, for my two pick. I pick Mark Williams from the Hornets. He's good improving. Um, I think he's a good big, especially for uh, LaMelo Ball. Also, Jalen Duran from the Pistons. Mm. I good really choice. like him. I don't think they're going to win, but there are two bigs that I think um, are improving. Um, and they're like the prototype bigs, and they can really rebound and block shots. Um, but my winner is Maxi to the maximum, Tyrese Maxi. Mm-hmm. Okay, because very good now, choice. Yeah, because now you have even when even if Harden was still there, I still think he would have made a jump because they really uh um value him. But now that Harden is gone, he's really going to take off because now he doesn't have to give the ball to Harden and, you know, play. Thank you God. Know. That's everybody's <laughs> happiest day. Yeah. The day that Harden finally leaves is like there's like a there's like a rainbow that 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 like appears over the practice facility and like birds oh, yeah. that sing birds like sing joyous songs. And there's like. There's harmony and unity amongst everybody once he finally leaves. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Did you hear? Or I think I might have sent you that. Like uh, one of the Maverick like announcers oh, like went yeah, out about yeah, yeah. That, that was, was hilarious. Like he, and then he did a he did a mic drop at the end. It was so funny. Yeah. 
Yeah. I wonder. I wonder. If, he went. I wonder if Harden like saw that and like what he thought about it. It'd be funny. Probably. <laughs> Somebody probably, probably sent it to him. He doesn't care. He cares about like going on the beach in Cancun and like going to clubs. That's all he yes. cares about. I don't think it's going to work out for the Clippers. Are they very talented with Russ and you got, you know, uh, Paul They're just old. Kawhi. They're old. They have, like, a lot of injury concerns. They're, they don't really defend super well. Like, I don't know. This is his last chance. I don't well, know I guess where some, he's going to go. Some people, some people on the Clippers can defend. I shouldn't say, like, everybody. Like, Kawhi is a great defender. Paul George can be a good defender. But, like, Westbrook, like, at his age and, like, Harden at his age. Like, the backcourt. The backcourt isn't a good isn't good at defense yeah. for the Clippers. But Zubak, Zubak, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George on the front line, those are good defenders. But, like, the backcourt's bad. Yeah. I like your pick of Tyrese Maxey. That's a good one. I I would say that it would come down to either Barnes or Maxey if I had to really predict Maxie, it. It'd be Maxie. between those two. So yeah. I went one way and you went another. So one of us will be, be right probably. Yeah, we haven't agreed yet. That's good. That's good. We haven't agreed yet, you know. It keeps the show interesting. This is a boxing match. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it is. Let's go with the sixth man of the year. I think Bobby Portis got cheated last year. That's, that's, we're Bucks fans. We're going to think that. Um, yeah. I feel like he was averaging almost a double double, leading the bench uh, with double doubles. But that's another story for another day. Um, mm. Do you want to go first with this or me? I'll go first. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. cool. It's always a, this is, yeah, this is a tricky one because it's like, I have to really think about like bench players and different things. And like, the other thing that I don't ever understand is like, is there a criteria for like six man of the year winners for like games started or something like, like if a, if a guy starts for 20 games and plays in 75 total games but like 20 of them are are games that he started in is he like eligible for six man or like you know what i'm saying like it gets yeah, like yeah. kind of confusing or tricky it. it gets like a little like confusing or tricky like what are the what are the criteria what are the standards what are the like in my ideal world like it would be and like then the other ones that are weird or annoying is like like the Tyler Hero when he won six man of the year award and like he came off the bench but he but he averaged like thirty one minutes. Like I think that's weird. Like if yeah. you're essentially playing starters minutes, but you just come off the bench, then it's like it's like weird to me. Like yeah. I think it should go to a guy who like averages less than twenty five minutes and like comes off the bench. That's more that's more of a true six man. That's more of a more of a fair assessment. Um yeah. I know Brogdon won it last year, and he's in Portland. Uh, there probably won't be much, much, uh, um, whatever the word is, like a. Um, I think he's actually uh, averaging. Him. Oh, what'd you say? There won't be much of a push for him probably to win it again since he already won it last year. Yeah. Um, I got a name. I, I thought of somebody. And it has to do with, you referenced the Dallas Mavericks playing a lot better this year. Um, okay. And you referenced you referenced them having a, a strong start. Um, yeah. I'm guessing they'll probably have a decent record since they've started out strong. I'm going to go with Tim Hardaway Jr. for sixth man of the Whoa, year. Oh, okay. Bold choice. Bold choice. Okay. That is, that is, that is bold. It's a... Uh, yeah. I, Any I, reason why? A, um, well, just the, I don't know, just the Mavericks playing better, I guess. Um, maybe because, maybe because I, 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 I chose Jokic for MVP. Mm -hmm. So 
that means that means in my scenario, Luca lost out on MVP. And if the Dallas Mavericks have a good season, that's not really totally fair to them. Maybe they should have a winner in something. So that's my logic in going with with him. Okay. My other my other choice my other choice would be Norman Powell of the Clippers. Oh yeah. He always he, lights the bucks up. Oh my god. No, don't, don't remind me. And we could have had him if he's, Jason Kidd didn't want Grievous Vasquez. Yeah, he's actually a, a good trade. player that the Bucks should go after. Because he can just light it up. We drafted Powell and then we traded him right away for Grievous Vasquez. That was uh that was rough. Bad rough trade. times. Rough times for a Bucks fan. <laughs> But then we won a championship, so it made things yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets better with the Greek freak. <laughs> it does. It does. So who's your sixth man? So, mine is between, um, you mentioned Brogdon. He is averaging 17 points, I was going to say. But I don't, the record is bad. I'm going to give it to um, Malik Monk or Emmanuel Quickly. Okay, that's a good one. Quickly is someone I thought of also. Yeah. I, I'm going to give it to Emmanuel quickly because he plays for the Knicks. I feel like the Knicks got a strong media presence. But also, um, he's more of a um, point guard than Malik Monk. And I feel like um, Quigley is going to get points and assists, whereas Malik Monk, he's mostly going to get, you know, points. Um, let me see. I'm going to see what they're averaging. Um, quickly, he averaging 15. Malik is, uh, 14. So, it's pretty close. Oh, Malik is actually averaging five assists. So, I feel like whoever puts up the most assists, in my opinion, should win. But I'm going to give it to Emmanuel quickly. Quigley. Quigley. Emmanuel. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on basketball reference right now, and I just looked up Tim Hardaway Jr.'s stats, like my pick for six man, and they're crazy. Like, he's he's averaging 18 points per game in 28 minutes. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, no, no starts. Hasn't started wow. any games. Uh, he's 39. Crazy. He's 39 percent from three currently. 44 percent from the field. 56% effective field goal. He's a 100% from the free throw line, <laughs> which yeah. is crazy. So, yeah, that's, we'll see. That's a great he's pick. Kind of, he's kind of always been like a streaky player, though. So, like, those numbers might change as the season goes on. He's always been a bit streaky. So, maybe it won't stay at that. Quickly is a good pick, though, also. That's a really good one. Do you watch the Timberwolves? Yeah. Do you know if Jalen McDaniel starts or comes off the um, bench? I will answer that question for you, Ashley. Um, on Basketball Reference here quickly. If he comes off. PG is free. Back with the Mercury. Lit. Dominate with dunks in the paint. Can you score over BG? No, you can't. No, no, Point no. God, Jesse Gray. Got a danger. Be back. Jaden McDaniels is a starter, so never mind. But he's a great defensive player. He could, you know, get, you know, one of those nods, like, you know, all team defense nods, I think. He's really good. But anyway, let's go to Rookie of the Year. Maybe we'll agree. We don't know. So (laughs) (laughs) the top ones I'm going for, top three, Scoot Henderson, He's actually gotten off to a horrible start. I'm not really sure why, but it's like eight points a game. But before the season, I was thinking he wasn't going to win it, but he's definitely like top three. Um, I don't know why he's not performing very well, because I think, you know, he had a good summer league performance. But Chet, it's all about Chet versus Victor, you know. They're both, you know, I was gonna say, perfect. Uh, I was going to ask if you if you were aware of the fact that Chet counts as a rookie since he didn't play at all last year. Yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. 
even though he's not a rookie from this draft class, he's from last year, but he didn't play at all last year, so he counts right. as a rookie yes. this year. The old the old Ben Simmons rule <laughs> and Blake Griffin. Yeah. And uh, he got in the weight room, he said, and I, I think it gives you a step up as a rookie because, you know, you're uh, around the environment, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. But I like both of their games. Um, I think Victor is gonna win because yeah. obviously <laughs> the hype it's just a when beyond oh. a mania, it's the hype, but also um She's also just very good. <laughs> right. <laughs> and He's I worthy think of the hype. A, what'd you say? He's worthy of the hype. <laughs> right, right. And he has like a higher ceiling, I think, than check. But also, I think Chet, he doesn't have as many opportunities as Victor has. Um, Chet has, you know, uh, Alexander on the team, Giddy on the team. Um, who else? Uh, Dort on the team. I don't know if Jim they're... Williams, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they're featuring him as much um, the way Victor and the, the way the Spurs are, you know... Um, you know, doing right. we can make this short and sweet and simple. I agree with you, Ashley Wembenyama, rookie of the year. We agree. <laughs> just, just so no just, way, no way, Chet can win. You saying that? Um, well, I wouldn't say no way, but their numbers probably, are similar. You know, their numbers are probably, a little similar. Probably unlikely due to some of the reasons you mentioned, like. Right. Shea Gilders Alexander and like some of their other guys are more featured on the team. Yeah. I did notice that Chet, he's more efficient um with the threes um and field goal percentage than Victor. But it could be Victor has more attempts, you know? So I just love it. I might make a separate um video just for Wimbiana because he's huh. Just, yeah. He's just I that mean, big. He does something crazy like every night now. So exactly, nineteen and eight. Chet I think is, it's almost twenty. It's almost twenty now. I think it's nineteen point nine oh, points per okay. game. So I round that yeah. up to twenty. Right. Jed is like seventeen, and I I noticed that um sometimes Victor has low rebound games. Side rant, I hated when Giannis, like, uh, like two years ago, he had 29.9 points per game. That's so annoying. Like, point one away from 30. I hate oh, that. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so then people go, oh, was it a 30-point score? Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's just annoying. That's annoying. So, <laughs> the next one we're going to go, it's a new award. Um, the Aaron Fox won it last year. The Clutch oh, no. Award. There's oh, a lot of, you don't like the award? I don't know. It's just a little weird. Yeah, I, I guess it's a little so. Strange. I guess like, how whoever. Do you, how do you define that? Like most game winners, most like points under five minutes to go in a game. Like what? What? What's defined by I that? You, I think you count all of that, and you count like I know that people love this stat. How many points? Um, how many points you have in the fourth quarter to help your team win? Um, I it's know just that, a weird. It's a weird one to me. <laughs> I know that Luca is. They said Luca is like first in field goal percentage in the fourth quarter. I think. I I really have no idea who I would choose for that award. I'll just I'll go with Damian Lillard. Why not? Dame time, Dame Damn time. Dollar. Yeah, let's side hey. rant. Side side rant. If Giannis staring at somebody for one second counts as taunting, doesn't Dame Lillard's like Dame time thing technically count as taunting then too? If if we really want to go down that road with the refs, like, yeah. What about are the refs like, gonna, um? Are the refs gonna start giving Dame like technicals and oh Dame time? Oh, it's a team. What about? Like, when Victor, uh, uh, no, when Curry did this, huh? Oh, yeah. Is, is he, like, yeah, that's taunting. It could be 
since they're not doing it to somebody, it, that could be it. But how do you know that Giannis Correct. was staring at the dude? What if he was staring at the camera guy? What if he was staring at a fan? You don't know who he was staring at. True. I mean, I don't know. It's like he, he dunks the ball and like he lands and the guy's just kind of like there in his space. So it's like he was already there. So yeah. Giannis just does. And like Giannis has done that mean mug like seven or 800 times probably in his career. Like, and it hasn't been a technical before as far as it's, I know. It's so just because it's really, Giannis probably said something that the ref didn't like and the ref true. Did. That's what I he think. Held a, he held a grudge. Yeah. Well, exactly. anyway, so yeah, my pick for clutch, clutch player of the year will be Lillard. So mine's uh would be Luca. I just think Luke. Did you see that shot where he just flipped it and he went in? On, so wait a minute now. You're giving your 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 you're picking Luca for MVP and Clutch Player of the Year. Oh boy, Ashley, you got it's you got Luca fever bad. You got yeah. you need to you need to you need a temperature check and it'll say Luca Luca it's fever. Luca the Don or Hookah. No, I'm the Luca magic, the Don. The magic man. Yeah. But I also Shay Alexander, he's mm, in my top three. A good one. And Dame Time. Dame Dollar is in my top three. You know what? I feel like I feel like DeMar DeRozan could win something like that too. Right, DeMar DeRozan. That's a great pick. That's, yeah. That's a great pick. Um, Tatum and Fox, they could win. Um, you I'll know, forward, I might go with Dame too. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. The only reason why I say I could go with Dame is because I, the Bucks are doing so bad that. Oh boy. In the fourth quarter. They're just giving it to Dame and saying, save us, Dame. Do what you do, Dame. Just like Giannis Ooh. said, Dame, we want to let Dame be Dame. I feel like we're either in a blowout or we're in a close game. So <laughs> well, I, we've had a lot of close. We've had a lot of, well, our wins have been close. And right. I, I actually kind of like that the Bucks have gotten off to a slower start because more losses means less load management. Giannis is going to play in more games. He's That's not going to be funny. sitting out if we're losing. <laughs> the thing I have is, a different like, view on that. <laughs> I, I love that we're not peaking because for all the teams that are peaking, like, you know, playing well and they only got one or two losses, it's like, where do you go from there? At least we also, have room to improve. Well, it's like the last five years, I feel like we've just been in so many blowout type games with Bud. We're like, our guys don't get a lot of minutes and we don't get like challenged enough where I actually think right. it's better this way to be in close games early in the season, to have Giannis playing more minutes. Like that's going to be beneficial in the playoffs because it's like under bud, like we didn't get our first challenge until the playoffs. And then it's like, we didn't know how to respond or we didn't know yeah, what to like do. Like 2019 was the, against the Raptors that I feel like that was the biggest example of it because we hadn't been like tested the whole year. We just ran through all these teams and destroyed everybody. Then we had the first round against the Pistons. We destroyed them. Then we beat the Celtics pretty easily. Then we got up two to zero against the Raptors in that series. And so like everything was easy for us until it wasn't. And then once a team finally pushed back on us and we got in like a tight situation and we got in some trouble a bit, and we got, we got punched back or we got challenged. We didn't know what to do. So, I think it's better this way. So, I agree, I'm more I optimistic. Agree. I know a lot of people are doom and gloom and worried about it, yeah. but they're panicking too. Much. Like, it's 10 games I'd, in, guys. Like, I'd, I'd rather, I would rather have it be this way. Like, I think this will be better for the Bucks. Like, right. I think this is better. Right. It's better to have it be this way. So, and like I said, be- less load management. And that means <laughs> I get to watch more of Giannis. Exactly. <laughs> No more, never, no more, no more on the bench. No, um, the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's I, also good for Giannis too to like playing more right. close games, and it's better yeah. for everyone. 
Because it looks like Giannis gets tired a lot in the fourth. He needs to pick it up. Um, I don't know. Like, he's not, like, in bad shape. But he's probably not in the peak shape that he should be, you know? No. Um, also important to remember, he didn't play for six months, which is yeah, unusual. Yeah, because he had um, surgery, right? And we had the, well, we had the early playoff exit for one. So right. we went from April 26th to October 26th of not having a game. So that was six month off season for him and he didn't play for Greece. So people just have to like relax and give it some time. Yeah. So I switched my pick from Luca to Dame because I feel like the Bucks are going to be in so many, you know, Mm-hmm. Um, games. But also, I, Luca has Kyrie, who knows how to hit clutch shots. True. So, and I have been catching Luca fever, so I'll pause it, you know, and just uh-huh. do Dame Dollar, Dame time. Um, I need, we need to give you some some medication to kind of like calm down the fever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who? Okay. I'm good now. Let me drink some Propel, you know. <laughs> you're, too, you're too warm. You're too warm yeah. with the Luka fever. Um, so, Coach of the Year. Who do you have for Coach of the Year? Um, oh, boy. Huh, there's a question. That, that's a hard um decision. But yeah, I is. think I'm going to go with the Thunder OKC because I feel like um last year they surprised a lot of people. And this year... Um, I feel like they're going to be a higher seed in the West. So I pick, uh, OKC coach. Let me see how to pronounce his name. I don't even know who their coach is. His name is Mark. Then, uh, Okay. I'm just going to say Mark OKC coach. (laughs) There you go. Um, you could probably pick – I know the Heat are not, like, playing very well, but you can always pick Spo because they always manage to get in the playoffs somehow. You can always pick Celtics, Nuggets. Oh, Jason Kidd. Oh, my goodness. What if Jason Kidd wins Coach of the Year? Oh, no, my goodness. No, no. Oh, no, not that. Oh, my goodness. There should I be a – there should be a – there should be a, a rule or a law like against against that. Or Nick Nurse, a guy that I don't know if the Bucks should have got him, but he he got himself out the race, I think. So um, let's see. Uh, um, well, for Coach of the Year, that typically goes to a team that like overachieved that was very good that you weren't expecting them to be good. Um, so that's uh, important to keep in mind. Um, so let me take a look here. Who has gotten off to uh, a, a great start that is a sub that, that qualifies as a surprising start that you wouldn't have expected. Hmm. That's true, but they can always tell off. You know, it's the beginning. Yeah, it is. Um, No, you are right. Um, That is true. Um, I am going to go with Rick Rick Carlisle of the Pacers. That's a perfect pick. That is perfect. Because the Pacers, (laughs) no one expects the Pacers to do anything. And so... And now they're improving. As long as Ty, Tyrese Halliburton stays healthy, they, they should make the playoffs. Yeah. I think if they had, like, a top six seed or something, he would probably win it then. Okay, okay. Who do you There's think that pick. win? Huh? Who's your, who's your coach of the year pick? Oklahoma City? Okay. Mark. Oh, Mark. Okay, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> we can't pronounce his last name. Sorry, Mark. Mark D. It starts with a D. Huh. <laughs> um, GM of the year. Oh, jeez. Another hard one. John but Horse, I, baby. John Horse with the Dame time. Forgetting Damian Lord. Um, 
I mean, how about how about the Spurs GM for picking Wembenyama number one? I mean, who who would have thought to do that? Wow, <laughs> I would pick Scoot number one. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> See, Ashley, you could have been you could have been a GM there, and you could have you could have drafted Wembenyama, and he would be forever remembered as the best GM or something. Exactly, exactly. It's like who who would have known to do that? Who would have known? So you pick John Horse. Also, he makes oh, big no, trades. I didn't, oh, I didn't actually, I didn't oh, actually okay. pick him. I just mentioned his name. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. I, I was going to say he makes big trades at the trade deadline too. He does. So that's, you know what? I am going to say John Horst because of because of what he usually does at the trade deadline. Also, I think yeah. we'll, we'll pick somebody up. So we got more moves. We always do. He, he has a history of always making a trade and picking someone up. So. So I will go Horst. In Horst we trust. In Horst we trust. Um, I don't think they're going to give it to John Horst. But I think John Horst is a Believe great pick because of game time. That was Believe that. That broke the internet when that happened because oh, I wasn't expecting it. I was expecting him to go to the Heat. Um, but I was, I was Boston, one of those people who I was one of those people who didn't believe he was going to the Heat. Actually, oh really? Okay. I actually thought he might have gone to the Nets because the Nets were also like on his list, and I thought that the Nets had a lot of like tradable young pieces like McCall Bridges. And like Cam Thomas and stuff, so yeah. I thought that one made sense because I thought, yeah. and I I didn't think the Bucks had like the pieces to get him, and I thought like if we were to get him, we would have had to have traded like Marjan, Bochamp, oh, or right. I thought we were going to have to trade some like a young piece. So I thought it made more, and I I didn't think Miami had the pieces to like land him, like they weren't the. Blazers weren't interested in Tyler Hero, and that's really all they like had to offer. They didn't really have like young pieces to offer, so I just I didn't think it. I didn't think the Heat and the Trail Blazers ever made good like trading partners. It just didn't really make sense to me. So, okay. but I was surprised that he went to the Bucks. I mean, I I thought we were going to have to give up a lot more than what we did for him. Yeah. The fact that we didn't give up Marjan, that was big. Um, I Although didn't Grayson, think it would work. Grayson because, had a few. Huh? Although Grayson's had a few good games for the Suns, but he's kind of like a – he's a good regular season player, but um, he, he lacks, like, in the playoffs, I think. Like, he just doesn't seem like a playoff-type player. Yeah. Mostly due to, like, size, kind of, like – I mean, we couldn't afford to have him when we played against the Celtics, and, like, he can't play against Brown and Tatum. Like, it's just not, like, fair. Yeah. Like, they just, they just pick on him, basically. <laughs> they pick on a lot of people. They do. They do. Yeah. Grace Carter, looks, Carter, Carter, looks, Carter looks good so far, a lot better than he did last year. So I'm hopeful well, about that. He was off last year, like a lot of time, because he and didn't Bud, play with the Suns. And Bud didn't seem to like him very much. He, yeah, he was that's in Bud, very Bud, weird. He was in Bud's doghouse a lot. Even though early on when he came here, he had a couple of really good games against the Suns. And then, like, he just stopped playing, which I thought was really weird. But yeah. I don't know. Maybe he just wasn't in shape, I guess. was I think that was the biggest issue. He took too much time off and tried to come back at the end of the season. It just didn't work. So this year he's got a full training camp and everything with the team. So I think it's just a better fit now. Hopefully. Yeah. JC. So um, who was your who was your GM of the year pick? I'm trying to think because I would <clears throat> pick Boston. Boston um traded oh. for KP. <laughs> no, don't do it, I, Ashley. I didn't say I was picking them. They're in my don't top three, though. Um, if you pick, if you pick the Boston GM to win, I will never join your show again. <laughs> oh, um, I, 
you you're not letting me talk. They are in okay. my top three, but this is what I'm gonna say. They got Drew Holiday and KP. However, they lost guys. Yes, they lost Marcus Smarts, right? And KP, I like him. I just don't think he's gonna stay healthy. And Drew. I do like Drew on your team, but as a GM, it's kind of like, okay, we traded Dame Dollar, and you are like, oh, no, we missed Marcus Smart, so let's just get Drew. So, really, we sort of helped you Celtics out, so it's like, should I really give you the GM award because, really, you got Drew because of us. So it's like, should I really give you the GM award? I don't think so. But you're in my top three. Um, they the lost Blake. Grant Williams. They oh, lost yeah, they Robin, lost Grant Williams. Robert yeah. Williams. Um, they lost a lot Robert, of guys. Oh, Robert, I feel bad for the guy. I think yeah, he's he now, dropped he's his injured. knee. I think there's something always going to be wrong with his knee. Something genetic or something. Um, yeah, it seems that way, unfortunately. But, yeah, they lost a lot of pieces. Um, also, I like what the Lakers did. They got so many players. They got Cam Reddish. Um, who else they got? Um, they re-signed a lot of the players. Lakers. Rui, Rui um, Reeves. Christian Wood. Oh, yeah, Christian Wood. That was – so um, I really like – the Lakers. I think I would give it to the Lakers. However, they're not playing their best. But I'm going to give it to the Lakers because I like a lot of their pieces that they got. They got Jackson Hayes, who I like. Um, if, the Suns, if the Suns pick up their game, I could see the Suns GM winning GM of the year, too. Oh, yeah, because they got Brent, uh, Bill, Bill. Yeah, Bradley Bill and Grayson. And- Mm-hmm. Well, well. And uh, and Nurkic, Nurkic, Eric Gordon, yeah, Nurkic. Eric, yeah. Eric Gordon too. I'm just gonna pick uh Rob Palenka, but you're definitely right. The Suns can definitely win. Um, but so yeah, Spurs, that's my top three. I think the Spurs GM has to has to be thought of as in the conversation for picking Wemby. I mean, who would have done that? <laughs> and of course, I want to pick Dane Dollar. I'm just gonna pick somebody different, so I so we won't seem biased. They might say this is the Buck Show. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean? You know, we've been talking about the Bucks so much. I don't want to pick the Bucks GM to win. Oh, sure, GM. Yeah, yeah. They might say this is the Buck Show. I thought this was NBA awards. <laughs> do you want me to 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 recant on my on my horse no. pick? No, no. Okay. I think horse is in the conversation because Dame Dollar is big. We got to mm-hmm. definitely pick it up, which I think we will. Also, I think we're going to make a big trade for a wing defender. I just feel it. I think Pat Cometon, I'm sorry. I think your time is winding down. Also, oh, because we got Ajax, who I think deserves more time. Do you see all that energy he brings? And he's all over the place. And AJ Green, more time. AJ Green oh. could AJ Green could step up kind of in Pat's repl- in Pat's replacement too. Exactly. So, so we I have just, the we have the guys who could. Yeah. So I feel like Pat. The one thing that stinks like about that thing. is Pat. Pat really is a good playoff player though, and always has been for us. Yeah. So that part kind of stinks. Like Pat's a weird player because he's the opposite of what the Bucks usually have. The Bucks usually have guys who are elite in the play, elite in the regular season and they fall off in the playoffs like Drew Holiday shooting or Eric Bledsoe but like Pat's like the opposite he's like bad in the regular season but like turns it up for the playoffs yeah. so it's and like really need, weird it's kind of yeah you need that's the bucks problem it's like it's Pat's they always fool you they fool you. It's like yeah, it's, oh, the playoffs going to be big. Look at us. We knock down all these threes, and then we don't. And it's like yeah. we've been we've been duped. So that is a problem. It's like 
can the youngsters step up in the playoffs? Marjan, Ajax. That's why I'm mad at Bud, because Marjan could have got a lot of more experience. Yep, he should have. That that it's like he's still a rookie. Um, it was bad. He should have played more last year. Yeah, so. Do we have any other awards, or are those all uh, the awards? Do you, for the NBA Cup, who do you got winning the NBA Cup MVP? Oh, I, I have no idea of that. <laughs> I got the, the Bucks, to be honest. We're going to play in Vegas, and we're going to win in Vegas. That's what I got. I have no idea, like, for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I don't really know fully what's all going on totally with the tournament stuff. So I'm kind of like that one player, Bowens Highland, he quoted, like, he was quoted, like, I don't know what's going on for the tournament. No Games, one knows. I just, no one knows. So I guess I'll just say Bucks too. Why not? All I know is when they have the court, when they have those different alternate courts on, that's a term terminant game. That's all well, I know. Even yeah, Dame Villa didn't know what was going on. Well, I thought I think I saw that the tournament games are only on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, okay. That's what the tournament stuff is. It's Tuesdays, Fridays, side rants, some of the courts. The Bucks tournament court, I actually think, is the best because it's the most like normal looking. The other courts, like, just they're too bright. Like, it gives me a headache. I you don't like the court. ones that are very different. You like those? Okay. Yes, I like the ones that are different. They're out there. How can you I watch just, it though? Like, it, it gives me I a think headache. It's a little boring if you just put a logo on there. I think that's what the Bucks did. It gives they me just a headache. Put the logo on there. Just for me, it gives me a headache, like seeing like the, the, the purple like court and like I, if I watch it for too long, like my I just I get a headache from it. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's just my own like vision problems. <laughs> it's too bright. It's too much for me. Yeah. So like do, you, do you have a um a finals prediction or like a Eastern Conference prediction? I um, think in the Eastern Conference. It's going to be Bucks versus Celtics, and the Bucks are going to win. I the sure hope thing. so. Because I'm a Bucks fan. I will say Denver Nuggets will for sure be in the finals again. That's what I think. Um, they just look like unstoppable. They're just such a well oiled machine now. They have the experience of winning last year. So. I just I see them as as being able to to go there again most likely I think um, I don't see anyone really challenging them. They got Porter, I, Gordon, Murray. As you long know, as Murray is healthy. True. That that's, that's the one thing, thing that can stop them. That's the one thing that could possibly change it if he isn't healthy. If he is though, then I I I believe they'll be back. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say for the East. I, it's so early. I want to say Bucks, of course, but with our coaching and experience and us having like a rookie coach, that scares yeah. me. That a bit. does hurt us. Like that. <laughs> a lot of people have brought up. A lot of people have brought up. If you knew that we were getting it. If, like, you could see into the crystal ball as a fan and you knew that we were going to get Damian Lillard, would you have fired Bud still? And I would say no. If I knew we were getting Lillard, I would have kept Bud. But knowing that we, not knowing that we weren't going to get Lillard or something, we had to make a change when we did. And I agree that the change needed to happen, but it just kind of stinks that, like, we got Lillard after yeah. getting rid of Bud. I never thought about that. I think I would have kept Bud too if we got if Dame you, because if that you knew ahead of time that we were gonna get Dame. Right. Yeah, it's Maybe just something. something. Yeah, um I'll say it. I'll say the same prediction as what I gave with my other friend more on an informal basis. I'll say Bucks Nuggets finals, Nuggets winning in game seven. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Ashley. I'm so sorry. I don't. <laughs> uh, I know. 
I don't like saying that. This is one thing that I don't want to happen. And I would say I, I'm 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 giving the the Nuggets the nod in Game Seven, or just overall in the series due to coaching, like their coach versus a rookie Our coach. coach. Yeah. Well, I I'll, I'll say the same prediction as you, because I just don't know about AJ Griffin. Um, it's too early to tell. Um. It's just too early to tell with AJ. It's like there's so many questions. And then we change the be, defense. Huh? I would still be happy with that season. Don't get me wrong. I'd I'd love to go back to the finals. That'd be awesome. Like even if we lost, like it'd even still be good. Lost? Well, I don't want to lose, of course, but I just I don't know. Going to the finals is always fun. That's true. I think going to the finals will definitely keep Dame because Dame will be like I never been to the finals, you know. Um, I just don't want that losing record on Giannis's resume. But yeah. I mean, if you lose once in the finals, it's not bad. Mm. Getting to the finals though, like helps his resume. Like that, that, that helps him. Like that matters. That's- going one and one in the finals is better than going one and no and never getting back there. That is very true. Very true. See, you just dropping gems. Yeah, Cal dropping gems. Bam. Um, also it's going gonna to it, it would be a great with Jokic versus Giannis. Now that would be great. Dame versus the Murray. Yeah, the, the entertainment factor would be high. It'd be uh-huh. it'd be very entertaining. So my dark horse in the east would be the seventy sixers. I just yep. think they've gotten off to a great start. They got Pat Bev, Kelly mm-hmm. Obre, prayers up to him. He got in a car oh, accident. Yes. That's horrible. Yeah. Very sorry about that. Hope they he's okay. A, they said it's a fractured rib and they'll like reevaluate in a week. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, I hope he's okay. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, that was scary. Yeah. That was a shocker. Prayers he's up. playing well. Prayers up for him. Yep. They got obviously Joel and B. They got rid of Harden. They got Maxi. You know. You know, Ashley. It just occurred to me. We forgot the most important prediction award oh. that you could possibly have. What's the most one? What? Wh- which one did we miss? We got to get it in. The most important prediction of the of the 2023-2024 season. Tell me. Tell is, me. Tell me. Is is who will be the All Star Game MVP? Oh, that's, <laughs> I never thought about that. That's a big I'm award. Just, Kobe Bryant I'm just, award. I'm just kind of joking. That's, that's I'm just trying to be funny. That's whoever gets hot. True. Giannis does have one. He does have one of those awards. Let's get Dame. Let's get Dame one. Let Let's get sure. Dame one. I think he might have one actually. Oh. Let me look. I'm on bas- well, I'm on my I'm on my trusty basketball reference. I know he w- he this. was hitting shots from half court last time and he helped he helped Giannis get his first um team Giannis win. You know? Wow, that's really that's really surprising. He actually has not won an all star game MVP in his career. Maybe because so he's he, laid back. He needs to get one. So he does well, and he's usually like a bench player or a reserve on the All Star game, so he doesn't play as many minutes. That's another thing. Yeah, we we need to get him in the starting lineup. I'll predict. Uh, I'll predict Giannis All Star Game MVP. Ooh la la! <laughs> I can't wait Cause Giannis, to. Because Giannis plays hard every game, every moment, That's like no true. matter what. That's and true. like Embiid and Jokic don't really like care about like All Star games. They're just kind of there, like chilling. Yeah. Um. That's true. That's true. They more like chill, you know. You don't have don't. to give a prediction on that one. That's just kind of like a joke to me. I'm just <laughs> I, I had mine's Dame. That's who, who okay, I picked. Okay. Dame Dada okay. baby. So I hope he uh, gets healthy soon. He needs to yeah. come back because this is important time for the Bucks, like chemistry building. So, like, you don't want 
Lillard missing games now. That's like That's true, but you don't want his calf to like build up because a lot of players play through I like guess. injury uh, and then yeah. it hurts them down the line. Well, I don't know. Like, I mean I don't know. Call me call me a call me a skeptic or call me a bluffer, but they showed him warming up on the court before the past right. two games and he looked pretty just fine to me. So I don't really know how serious it is. Yeah, I think the players warm up to isn't it like a game time decision and they warm up to see yeah. if they're slow or not? But I mean, yeah, I yeah. guess maybe if he still feels sore after the warm up or something. I wonder I guess. if it's like I don't know. I'm just I'm just I'm I'm eager and maybe not patient enough because I want the Bucks yeah. to patience. form their chemistry. Patience, patience. Yeah, there's a lot of it's games until the playoffs, I guess. Chris is still on minute restriction. Once Chris gets off the minute restriction and Dame gets some more games, we need to get some more pick and rolls. I think everyone wants the success to happen now. When the season, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know? Well, no. I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like, I, I know, like, the – I know the success isn't, like, as important or not. I just want the players to play together as much as possible right. to, get the, to get the chemistry, to get the experience. Like, right. I don't care if Beam and Giannis, like, both, like, you know, if we don't win a lot of games early on or something, that's, that's fine to me. I just want them to build those – reps and like experiences with each other in different pick and rolls and in different I just I just want it to build I don't right. like I don't care as much whether we win or lose like all the games early on or something that's not that's not like as important to me I just want I just want our our guys to get minutes together or like Middleton playing with Dame like he hasn't ever played with Lillard before either so that's, that's another good. one same with Brooke Brooke is like a big part of our team and, you know, yeah, he yeah, needs yeah. to play with, with Willard. So like everybody wants to just focus on the Giannis and Willard connection. And, you know, that's great and fine. Like, obviously they're the two, they're the two big, big names and everything. But like, it's like for the whole, for the starters as a whole, they have to work with Dame. That's I, before we end the show, I'll, I'll ask you this one quickly. Cause I know we talked about it earlier. Do you think, or I think you answer, or I guess you already answered it. Like, um, you want to see Malik Beasley in more of a, a bench role, not mm-hmm. with the starters. Yeah. It seems like it seems like Griffin is kind of hell bent into like keeping him with the starters. I don't yeah. know if that's really going to change or not. Griffin seems to be doing the, he's doing the. I'm a rookie head coach, and like I'm just going to trust the vet trust the veteran players is what he's like falling on, which most coaches usually do. They're like, Oh, Malik Beasley, like you're a vet. Like, Oh, you automatically like get to play. It's like, no, like people have to like earn, they have to earn their playing time. Right. Scott, Scott Skiles was the worst with the bucks and doing that. He'd just be like, Oh, like the bucks have like a rookie LeBron on the team. Oh, sorry, LeBron. Like you can't play because you're a rookie. Like, we have like a th- uh, a uh, a forty one year old Kyle Korver, like he's gonna play instead of you because he's a vet. Like that would just be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> like, where do you see his role? Do you think he will stay on the team for the whole year, or will he be traded at the trade deadline? Is another question. I think he'll stay on the team the whole year. I don't think because I think the Bucks do need a sniper, and he's like, uh, yeah, um, a he just seems to make. He seems to make more sense with like a second unit that needs his scoring. You don't need his scoring when you have Lillard and Giannis in the starting five. Right. You need defense and in the backcourt, that's what you need. Defense, you know. Yeah, he doesn't seem particularly interested in that. Well, I mean, they have all these quotes about, yeah, I'm trying to get the, you know, better defensively and be more of a defensive player this year like bro that's not his role though you've been in the league for how long you've never been a defensive player just stick to what you know threes you're never gonna be you should expect that earlier well that's 
Well, I mean, I will say some of that's maybe his fault, but like the rest of it is Griffin. Like he's got a Griffin has to know, like, these are who these people are and they're like, not going to change. Like Brooke Lopez, isn't going to be like a perimeter defender all of a sudden or something like Griffin has to like, you can't, I like the analogy of like putting square pegs into round holes. You can't try to like force something that isn't going to work like that. You have to, you have to work with the personnel of your team. You don't try to change the personnel to fit what you want. You have to work to their strengths. Like Malik Beasley, every single player has flaws, even like even Giannis or even like even the greatest players, everybody has a flaw and you have to, you have to work with players, flaws and strengths. You have to acknowledge and understand like, okay, Malik Beasley isn't a good defender. Okay. Like that's a flaw. That's his flaw. Okay. That's fine. Everybody has a flaw, but now let's, let's take that flaw and let's put it with a group that can make it work, that can make the flaw less of a problem. That's true. That's true. Coach Cal. Although I will say one potential problem, I will say one potential problem with that, with Beasley on the bench is like Beasley and Portis playing together on the court and like the bench unit, both of those guys aren't really strong defenders at all either. So that maybe hurts. And Portis. Oh. Portis. Well, I guess it's more important in the uh, starting lineup. And then, because some starters play with some bench players anyway. So I think it's more important, especially for the Bucks, because for some reason, be. they get blown out real early. And I think it's because our... I just think we need a better two at the at the spot so yeah okay there we go there you have it nba award predictions and lots of bucks content oh yeah thank you cal for joining me we covered a lot about our predictions awards especially bucks you know because we the bucks we the bucks milwaukee yeah thank yep. you for joining me thank i know you. we're gonna be on more shows Thank you. Peace. Thanks for having us. Everyone like, comment, and subscribe for more. You heard? Peace. Go Bucks. See you, Ashley. Thank you. See ya. Thank you.